Welcome to a Code Report Solution video. In this video, we're going to be covering the solution to problem one from the Hacker Earth July Easy Contest entitled Largest Square. The problem states you are given endpoints on an infinite 2D plane. You need to find four such points among these endpoints such that they form a square with a positive side length and whose sides are parallel to the X and Y axis. If there are multiple choices of four such points, choose those which form the square with the largest side. If there are still multiple choices of four such points, choose those four points in which the bottom left point has a lower Y coordinate. And if there are still multiple choices of four such points, choose those four points in which the bottom left point has a a lower x coordinate. And note that the constraints for this problem are going to be uh, n, the number of points we're given are, is going to be between 1 and 2,000, and the values, uh, the values of our x and y uh, points are going to be between 1 and 10 to the 9th. So let's take a look at the example that Hacker Earth provided us with. So here's our input. We're given that there are six points, and then the next six lines consist of our x coordinate and our y coordinate. So if we graph this, it looks as follows. And we can pretty clearly see what the answer, just by visually looking at this, is going to be. So there are uh, two squares formed by these six points, the, the one on the left here and the one on the right. And due to what they ask us uh, to return, first by the side length of the square, which is equal for the two, and then by the lower y coordinate, which is equal for the two and then by the lower x coordinate. So we're going to return 1, 1, uh, the bottom left hand coordinate of the square here. So the way we're going to solve this problem is by storing these points in a map of sets where the key in the map is going to be the x value. So here it's going to be 1, 3, and 5. And the set that corresponds to that key is going to be the corresponding y values for each of the x values. So because this example is a bit trivial, uh, each of those sets is going to be the same. It's just going to be the y value 1 and the y value 3 because they each uh, share the same points uh, in terms of y value. So it's going to look as follows. Uh, our x values, as mentioned before, 1, 3, and 5, and then uh, the set uh, for each of these keys is going to correspond to the y values. And then what we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to try and find all possible values for x1, x2, and y1, y2. And uh, these four values are going to combine to make our four points. And so the way we're going to do this is we're going to loop over each of our sets in our map. So we're going to start by looking at our first set and our first key, which is 1. And we're going to set the key of that set to be x1. And so once we do that, then we're going to loop over every single pair of numbers in our set. So for this example, it's a bit trivial. We only have two numbers in each set, so that only means one pair. But you can imagine if we had a bunch more y values for each of our x's, uh, this set would be longer. And so we're going to end up looping over each pair of numbers in this set. So we're going to set uh, y1 to be 1. And at this point, we now have our first uh, coordinate. So that's going to be uh, 1, 1. So we can highlight that here. And then uh, from there, we're going to end Enter sort of the nested for loop to figure out each pair and we're going to select the 3 to be y2 and at this point we now have our second coordinate which is going to be x1 y2 uh, which is 1 3 uh, so now we have half of the points that we're looking for in our square and we can figure out the rest of our points from just this information so clearly because we have uh, these two points we can calculate the side length which is going to be equal to 2 just 3 minus 1 and then we can figure out we can calculate what x2 is going to be by just adding the side length to x1 and because this is a square if it was a rectangle we wouldn't know uh, what the possible uh, x2 value is going to be but because we're given that this is a square we know all the side lengths are equal so we can just go x2 equals x1 plus side and that's going to give us uh, 3. So note this is bolded and underlined it, and it doesn't correspond to sort of a color-coded value because we calculated this number. Uh, but now that we have all four coordinates, we can figure out what our next two points are. Uh, so that's going to be x2, y1, and x2, uh, y2. And that's going to give us these two points. And we can see that this uh, forms a square visually. Uh, but the way we're going to check this is we are just going to do a uh, log n uh, search into our set uh, to figure out if these points exist. So we have the coordinates uh, x2, y1, and x2, y2. So we're just going to do a lookup on our key and to see if the corresponding values are there and we're gonna so this is gonna be the key that we look into and we're gonna see 
do the values in this uh, set that corresponds to the key three, do they exist? And because we're looking for one and three, and they do exist here, we know that the square exists. Uh, and so because that's the case, and right now we don't have any uh, squares found, we are going to set our max side currently to be two and the answer uh, to be equal to one, one. And then we're just going to continue this algorithm for um, every single key and uh, looping over every single pair of numbers for each set. So because there was only one pair for our first key, we move on to our second key, three, and that, if we follow the same algorithm, is gonna generate another square, uh, but because the y coordinate is the same, but the x coordinate is greater, we're going to leave our answer to still be 1, 1. And then if we move on to our final key, we're going to end up looking for a square uh, in the following coordinates. But because we don't find the points uh, at 7, uh, 7, 1, 7, 3, uh, we're not going to find a square. So uh, we're not going to try and reset any of our max side or answer. So that's the full algorithm. It's pretty straightforward uh, once you figure out that you can generate to the last two coordinates once you have the x1, uh, y1, and y2. So let's take a look at the code. So this is the uh, algorithm in C++. Uh, we have at the top here uh, a function create map of sets from input. We can look at that quickly, but it's pretty straightforward. We're just reading in n, uh, which is the number of points we have. We're uh, declaring our map uh, where the key is an integer, the x value, and the value is a set of integers representing the corresponding y values. And then we just have a for loop where we read in each of the x and y's, and then we insert uh, the uh, y value into the uh, set that corresponds to the uh, x key. And then we just return this map. And so once we come back to our uh, main function here, uh, we have our answer, which we're going to initialize to be a pair of zeros, and we have our max side, uh, the value of our max side, which we're going to initialize to zero. And then we're going to enter our first for loop, and this is looping over our set. So uh, we're going to do this algorithm, the inner loop, uh, for each of our sets. And the first thing we're going to do is set x1 equal to be the uh, value that has that is our key. So in our example, this is going to be one for the first time, and then we have a nested for loop for each of our sets. So uh, each of these lines is just basically getting your, your y1 and your y2. So every single pair uh, that you can generate from the values in your set. So note that our uh, outer loop here is setting y1 to be equal to begin, and then y2 is equal to the next value that's after uh, our y1. And so once we have uh, y1, y2, and x1, we can calculate the length of our side by just subtracting y2 from y1. And then here we check, uh, is this side value less than our current max side? If so, we don't need to check to see if the other points that would be in our square are there because it won't matter. It's not going to be our answer. And we also need to check if uh, the side is equal to our max side length and uh, if our y coordinate is uh, greater than or equal to our current y coordinate and our answer. If that's the case, then we don't need to... Uh, we don't need to look at the co other coordinates because we know it's not going to be our answer either because we're supposed to return uh, the largest side and with the lowest y coordinate and the lowest x coordinate in that order. And the lowest x coordinate is taken care of the fact that uh, it's taken care of because we have sorted uh, our x coordinates in our map. So we're going we're gonna to find the uh, answer with the lowest x coordinate just by the way that we've stored our x values. And so uh, if we haven't continued to the next iteration of our inside loop, we're going to calculate x2 by just adding side to x1. And then here we just check to see, uh, do the two coordinates that we haven't found uh, before we calculated x2, do they exist? So we just do that by getting our set by using the bracket operators and then checking in that set, does y1 exist and does y2 exist? If they both exist, and at this point we know that this will be the optimal answer so far, uh, we reset our max side to be equal to side and then reset our answer to be the pair of uh, values x1 and y1. And so once we can uh, you know, finish every single one of these four loops, uh, we will have our answer. And so uh, we just need to check that uh, we actually have found a valid answer. So if ms is no longer zero, we output uh, those two coordinates. But if it is still zero, that's me that means that we actually didn't find 
a square. And in that case, the problem tells us to output negative one. Uh, so yeah, it's a little bit messy. It's not my favorite piece of code, uh, but it gets the trick done. Um, and the last thing to talk about is the time complexity. Uh, for this problem, it's going to be n squared log n. Uh, because the number of points we have is n, and we're in the worst case, you know, every single uh, y coordinate is going to be attached to the same x coordinate. So we end up getting uh, n squared for generating all the pairs for that. And then we're going to end up doing uh, a log n for our account here, which is basically a binary search. So uh, n squared because of these two for loops, and then log n because of this count. So in total, n squared log m. And thanks to Dennis for reviewing this code. And because I was not a big fan of the way that this code looked, I asked if uh, he had any suggestions. And he came up with a beautiful solution using a really modern uh, C++, making use of uh, generic lambdas that are modifying generic lambdas, uh, making use of you know function deduced return type and also some algorithms that he had uh, written himself group equal and process dots on one line so this is just the main function that he's written here uh, but I will post a link or post his code in the github link as well as the solution that I showed before if you want to take a look at uh, his full solution which is really really nice so thanks uh, to Dennis for this solution and for reviewing my other code as always, if you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, hit that like button. If you want to see more, make sure to hit that subscribe button. You can follow me on Twitter for reminders 30 minutes before contests start, and you can find all of the code shown in my videos on my GitHub page. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.